We've just seen the draw, Michael Verney. Tipperary against Cork and Clare against Wexford. What are you thinking? Sure, we knew we knew Davy was going to end up against Brian Law, and I think all the um, all the Clare people and see Derek Lynch on Twitter, he had kind of resigned himself to the fact it was going to happen, and there was no need for a draw to even take place this morning. But that um, that's a, that's uh, they're both very juicy. There's no point in saying any different. Uh, a, a tip team down uh, after being beaten by Limerick, and a Cork team that were down and are now uh, probably, probably by by the result against Dublin. And the, the other one is really really juicy. It's all going to be about the sideline battle with with Davy and Law. But yeah, very very interesting games. Yeah, we did a video even I think during the summer or the start of the year before they they clashed in the in the league and Clare won by eighteen points to fifteen. A really windy day. Just about Law and, and Davy Fitz and a bit of a feud if you want to call it that way or certainly the coolness between them and it was probably one of the biggest videos we ever did people are really interested in this I think we're all going to be very excited for this match and we'll see where it's fixed for Tipperary against Cork there's sort of a familiarity with this it's almost like Everton against Liverpool a bit of a friendly derby but generally very very entertaining yeah and the thing about Tip and Cork is generally when Tip have been going well Tip have been able to keep Cork at arm's length in recent years but when they weren't going well, um, even when they were defending the All Ireland in seventeen, Cork Cork surprised them, and they're they're capable of doing it, and they're sort they're probably going to be delighted with the the situation they're going to be coming into this game at the weekend. They're going to be underdogs, um, fairly heavy enough underdogs, I would say, and the pressure is probably on Tipperary. So yeah, it's going to be really really interesting. As I remember, obviously Cork Cork knocked uh, knocked Tip out when Liam Sheedy was over in in twenty ten as well. He didn't knock them out. He knocked them out a monster as well. Um, so that's kind of ten years ten years on from that. Uh, it's going to be very very interesting. Cork back on the comeback trail would have been happy enough with how things went at the weekend. Just kind of a different attitude. Uh, Tipperary have probably been stewing for the last couple of weeks, probably brooding, and are I'd imagine there's going to be a few changes and there'll be a different team against Cork at the weekend. But yeah, it's going to be really really interesting. Yeah, and I wonder about the venues too because if you're Tipperary and Cork, whoever comes through, the same at Wexford and Clare. You'd probably like it to be at Croke Park if you've got aspirations of winning an All-Ireland because Wexford have already had a game there, um, Kilkenny have already had a game there, Galway are going to have their second game there as, as well as Kilkenny. So do you think that there's any chance of it or do they go more local? Uh, could be tricky enough because the Leinster final is in Crow Park on Saturday and there's a Leinster football double header I think next Sunday so it could be could be tricky enough unless they're played early on Saturday I suppose a lot will have to do with, with TV times and things now as well because um, both one or both could be on, could be on TV at the weekend I'd say like people who will be scrambling nearly to to show both games from like from a Clare uh, Wexford point of view people. TV cameras are going to want you know to see whether Lowen and Davy shake hands and they'll be asked beforehand and asked after about their relationship or whatever. So that's interesting. Obviously, yeah, Tip Cork, Tip Cork is always going to be interesting. The fact that they're playing in the Munster football final as well, the way things worked out, is really really interesting too. Um, I think from a hurling from a hurling supporters' point of view, from a t- as a Tip man, it's probably not the best draw. For, from your point of view, um, I'd say probably. But being smart, I'd say he probably would have wanted Clare. That's that's just been honest because they think they're the weakest of the four. Mm. But from um from a, just a general hurling fans' point of view, it'd be absolutely delighted. It's a quarter to nine on a Monday, and you've got these two unbelievable games to look forward to, as well as an extra fine at the weekend as well. Do you think not uh, that Davy Fitz went like this when he saw Clare coming out or heard Clare coming out of the hat, John Hoare and calling it there? Not to mention his selector, Brendan Bugler, who obviously soldiered with a lot of these Clare players over the years. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I like if there was any motivation needed from Davy's point of view, and there rarely is any needed. Um, he definitely won't. He definitely won't need any now. And without being smart, Shane, as well, from from their point of view, like at least for I would say at least they didn't draw Tipperary. If I was thinking Davy, I'm thinking yes, uh, the horrible uh, local element to it, of the horrible week in Clare, uh, listening to people if I'm out and about or anything like that. But it, like based on based on how Clare have played in this year's championship. I would say Clayton and Clare are the worst of, of those four. So I think it's from from Wex point of view, it's the best draw that they could have hoped for. And from a Clare point of view, and they've probably taken a fair bit of flack um, since the Limerick game for the lack of help for Tony Kelly. And after the weekend, uh, they just got over the line against Leash and were like unbelievably heavy, heavy favourites to win that game. So um, they, they should have a bit of motivation to walk, uh, bounce back as well. But from Davy's point of view, it is probably the best draw, taking out all the other kind of elements of it. Mm-hmm. So it's a great chance for them to bounce back as well. 
Yeah, in some ways it's nearly the best that Clare could have hoped for as well because Corker after coming off a decent win over Dublin and I'd say confidence is up a little bit. You know, Wexford are after coming in off a heavy defeat. And in much and all as Clare have conceded heavily against Limerick and then were very unconvincing against Leash. They have at least put up big scores. Based on what we saw, I, it, I'd imagine David McInerney get off suspension and they beat Wexford earlier this year. So there's no reason that they can't feel like they can make a push for this. No, definitely not. And if you look at it, they haven't conceded a goal yet, despite, um, or sorry, they have conceded, sorry, I'm saying they, they didn't score a goal the other day. But they'll be looking at, this will be a big kind of, uh, the Wexford aren't going to threaten the goal that, that much. So I think it could be a big kind of, we could be in for a big kind of another, you know, 24, 25 points each kind of a game. That type of a high, high scoring game. And like, if you look at, how Lohan sets up and how they play compared to how Davy plays, they're polar opposites as well. Lohan would be playing a more traditional, I would say, an agricultural kind of a game plan, whereas Wexford is very uh, nuanced, I suppose, is the only way of describing it. And people think it, were thinking it was a bit too much against Galway and they were kind of overdoing their short passing game. But it's going to be it's a clash of styles. Uh, it's going to be maybe uh, a clash of egos to, to some extent on the sideline as well. Different types of characters. Lohan, the more reserved type of character. Davy, probably, I don't know, a bit more, bit more vocal uh, media wise maybe than Lohan. It's, it's going to be a completely different type of clash in nearly every aspect, but a really, really interesting one. And it makes what could have potentially been. I think this could re this could ignite the, the hurling championship. These two games at the weekend that mixed in with you know what potentially could be a brilliant Leinster final as well. There's a lot of uh, subplots and kind of undercurrents going to be going on this weekend with the two clashes and on Tip and Cork, like, like what, what is it? Cork bet and the hay saved is usually what to say to be no hay saved anyway this year. But it just be interesting. Cork are kind of bouncing now after the weekend. It was six points against Dublin, but they were, you know, they were ten or twelve points better mm. re realistically. Um, so they're in a totally different place. It's amazing what a week can do, and that's yeah, yeah. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a great weekend, great weekend ahead. Well, I expect that to be an absolute shootout, and whoever wins between Tip and Cork, they're gonna have a bit of confidence back. Uh, like for Cork, it would be, um, it would be a second win in the bounce. But they're actually going to be playing three weeks in a row now, and Tipperary had have had a couple of injury issues. Um, so maybe they've got a couple of those right, maybe they haven't. But either way, I think whoever comes through that, it's probably going to be a shootout, and they'll be uh, they'll probably be bouncing into the next round, into a quarter final. So uh, great stuff. Stay tuned for the hurling show that'll be coming up pretty shortly. We just wanted to get the find out what the draw was before we recorded it. So uh, yeah, stay with us. We'll be back again in a, in a little while.